Okay, everyone, welcome to the All Too Real 2 podcast. I'm your host, Michael E. Cullen II, and with me always is the other beautiful and wonderful host, Matthew Haas. Thank you. That was beautiful, Matt. You used the word beautiful last time, too. It's a very very nice compliment. Yes. I like that. Everything is beautiful in its own way. Yeah, that's true. Anyways, um, so we're... uh, we're still going down this journey of uh, the wonderful and beautiful world of direct video <laughs> sequels. Yes, I said beautiful again. It's the third time in this cast. It's like a beautiful piece of cake, right? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I laughed at my own joke. <laughs> it's, it's okay, man. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. No, really, it's okay. Okay, so today we're covering quite possibly the greatest sequel ever made. If you've never seen any other sequel before in your life. It's a movie called Bigger, Fatter, Liar, which was released in 2017 as a sequel to the 2002 family comedy Big Fat Liar. Yeah. The original, which starred Frankie Muniz and Amanda Bynes and Donald Faison and other people, Paul Paul Giamatti as the bad guy. Yeah. And in this one, we get some, uh, some kid. Some kid. I don't know who he is. Um, yeah, uh, some Garcia kid. Um, here, let's bring this up really quick. Some kid that's probably you know gonna be famous one he's, day. And... He he's in like a pop band or something, from what I I've heard. Oh, it's uh, his name is um, Ricky Garcia. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then um. Jodell Ferdland is his best friend, Becca. In this movie, Ricky plays Kevin Shepard, whereas in the first movie, Frankie Muniz played Jason Shepard. No relation. So is this supposed to be like a Stifler thing, a cousin, or anything like that? or No, totally no. different cities, okay. totally different characters, okay. just, uh, you know, similar names. Because that would be really weird if the same family went through the same, same situation exact thing. twice, like getting a, a great idea stolen <clears throat> from them. Oh yeah, don't don't spoil yet. That's, oh, don't, yeah. don't spoil this, this wonderful original story. Yeah, sorry. We'll we'll save that for later. And as the uh, as the uh, bad guy play, uh, named Larry Wolf in this movie, whereas in Paul Giamatti's character in the first movie was named Marty Wolf. Jesus. Um, Didn't this, even try. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, the story is loosely based on the boy who cried wolf. Yeah. So it makes sense why they give the last name. Oh, wolf. okay, I get yeah. it. Yeah. Um, at least the original, it makes sense. This one, I don't really... Well, it kind of does, because he lies yeah. in this one, too. Yeah, but what's the point? I um, <laughs> anyways, that's played by the, uh, and this I will say, the brilliant actor Barry Bostwick, yeah. who is normally amazing. He's not like he's necessarily bad in this movie. Not necessarily that Ricky Garcia or Jodell Fer- Ferdland are bad in this movie, either. I think they're all acceptable in their roles with what they were given. Yeah. I don't fault any of them. <laughs> I mean, if you're given a piece of shit, you can only do so much yeah. with it. I mean, right? you know, you, you know, you can shine a piece of shit all you want, and it's still not a diamond. Yeah. Yes. But this movie's not quite a piece of shit. Right? No, it's, it's somewhere it's okay. in the middle. I watched it on Wednesday, Wednesday night. It was a nice little thing to just sort of chill out to, and not really have to pay attention yeah. to a lot to figure it out. So, so what I did earlier this week. I do not remember if I ever saw the original Big Fat Liar. So I decided, hey, I'm going to refresh myself. So I watched both these movies back to back. And and um, I'm pretty sure that if we somehow put these two movies on a loop and did the whole like Clockwork Orange thing where you, you know, the 
you pry the guy's eyes open and make him watch a movie. <laughs> Pretty sure we can get them to confess to almost any crime ever. Like a form of torture, basically? Yeah. Probably. Yeah, just... Because, basically, here's the thing. Folks out there, if you've seen Big Fat Liar, you've seen Bigger, Fatter Liar. And better. Yeah. Basically. They, with a bigger budget. Yeah. The first movie had a bigger budget, obviously, because it was released in theaters, whereas this was direct-to-video. Plot points exactly the same. Instead of a black dri- limo driver, they had a Russian limo driver. That was about the biggest change in the whole freaking movie. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and instead of being in the but, original, the original, it was a, it was a story that, that uh, Jason wrote that uh, Marty stole. In this one, Kevin writes a video game. On a piece of paper. How do you write a video game? I, Does it mean the code? I guess so. But my thing is... Why would his teacher okay. even know how to read that, though? Yeah. It wasn't even about I know. coding, so... And it was for, like, some social studies class So how is, t- how is his teacher going to know how to read this? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Here's my thing about both of these movies, because I watched them back to back. Okay, um, I don't remember about the first one, but I know for sure in this one, Kevin is uh, not allowed to get on the internet. He still has access to his computer. Why is he handwriting this fucking paper? I, yeah, no, I, it doesn't make any much much sense to me either. Because I'm pretty sure Microsoft Word and any other kind of uh, you know thing of that nature works without well, the internet. What if the printer is that connected to the internet at all or not? No, would it, would it be able to? Print? No, you're you're you can print. Well, I know you normally, but I mean, if if it's if it's like. A whole system connected to the internet, or I don't know. No, and probably I mean, not. They probably and and if not, I mean, I, I don't know. I just I. They I'm sure he it, has a flash drive or something he could save the paper on and go and take it to school and print it. They wanted to make it seem more dramatic of yeah. him like writing out this. You know, but like, I'm saying, use your fucking computer, and this movie doesn't happen. Right, save it. Then you got a copy right there. Of course, I mean the guy could still steal it. But. Yeah, but you can at least prove to your dad yeah. because he didn't really care about the guy stealing the game. Yeah. He cared more about his uh, more about his dad believing in yeah, him. Yeah, we'll get back to that. Okay, yeah, this is, but, this is what makes the movie so stupid. Okay. Okay, so anyways, but anyways, no, no, okay. So what happens is in the first movie and in this movie, the main character gets hit by a rich guy's limo on his way to school to turn in a paper that he was supposed to have turned in before. But, you know, in this version, he plagiarized it, so that's why... He, Idiot. Yeah. Like, they don't have ways to test that. Yeah. And the other thing, too, is in that scene where, where he is plagiarizing it, he goes on his computer, there's a search bar right on his home screen. He didn't get online at all. Types into that thing, and everything pops up on the screen. There's no use of, like, huh. getting onto Firefox or Chrome or any kind of uh, web browser to get the stuff. And it all, and, and he just automatically goes, oh, yeah, this works, this works, this works. It's like he gets everything he needs right away. There's no searching involved. So, I mean, I'm, I, Google is pretty advanced, but not that advanced. And it's 2017. Yeah. So the directors still don't know how the internet works. I can understand it but, like but, I mean, 2000 the thing is, it, or something like that. Like, and the thing is, I won't even blame that on the director. I'll blame that on whoever did the graphics well, for that yeah. scene because and, – and obviously if they're doing graphics, they understand how, the frickin', how a freaking computer works. They're just dumbing it down for the audience, but it's still – the audience who would watch this movie unironically, I guess. I don't know. And then, I mean, I guess it's for kids. I don't know. But I don't know. Matt. It's very upsetting. My head hurts. My, <laughs> me too, a little bit. <laughs> okay, so. I don't know. What else happens in this plot? Quote, unquote? <sighs> this quote unquote plot. Well, okay. Gets hit by the car, and they, and they start wrangling with each other about who's going to sue who, blah, blah, blah. Kid says he'll call it even if he takes him to school. So the guy agrees to take him to school. And then he, the kid finds out that he's the president or the interactive or whatever. Vice president, the, of, vice, vice president of something at this video game company. So, the, yeah, the kid knows who he is, and then the guy is like, Oh, great, you must have a video game idea, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, yeah, I do, actually. 
So he gives him the paper. The guy pretends that he's not really interested in it. Takes him to school. He guy basically kicks him out of the car, keeps the paper in there, and has the driver drive. Yeah, on. unlike in the first one where um, Jason accidentally left the paper yeah. in the in the limo. This one that that is a little different. It is the it kind of makes a. Uh, this wolf guy, this Larry Wolf guy, more of an asshole like than Marty. Yeah, yeah, because he he pushes the kid out of the car, right, and then peels off with the freaking paper. Yeah, because in the first one, yeah, Paul Giamatti's character doesn't even read it when the kid's in the car. It's only he discovers it. Like after. I think he even at, at first even tries to offer to give it, but back. the kid's already run away. Yeah, so then he starts reading it, and he's like, "Oh, this is actually pretty good." And then he steals it. This guy's like, "You know what? Fuck you! I'm, I'm gonna stealing. I'm this. stealing this thing." <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, the kid, you know, is basically trying to chase after the car, and then he tells his teacher that, you know, he swears he's telling the truth this time. He actually did his homework for real, and it was such a great project, and, you know, he's lied so many times that she doesn't believe him, so he has to go to summer school. His dad's really disappointed in him. Of course, he's, he's got a dead mom, so it has the whole... Yeah, they added that in. Yeah. A little, give him so a little pro- bit of sympathy, she so he has so reasons. Pro- yeah. He has reasons to lie about everything. Yeah. And, you know, your mother was so proud of you, but I'm just disappointed. So you have that whole thing. And, uh, yeah, he's got to go to summer school. He's uh, basically hacking into a computer at summer school, talking to his best friend. And um, he, you know, really awkward. I mean, they had good chemistry, but I just mean, like, the the questions. Like, like hear of any, hear of any new games? Like, like why... What he like? They don't even seem like she like, doesn't even play video games with them. So like, why would she? Whatever. And then yeah, I mean, my my thing is it's too. It's like the he he he's in this detention or I mean I mean not detention but summer school or whatever. Mm-hmm. The computers in this in this in this summer school for some odd reason look like they're at least twenty years old. Yeah, I know. Yeah, because they that. got the old like you know CRT monitors on them and they've got like you know these you know and and, and he hacks into that. But yet he couldn't hack his computer at home to get onto the internet that his dad took away. Oh yeah, that's a good point. That's right. Yeah. Or he, or, or be smart enough to save his fucking paper. That's the thing too, because he he got to break into the school firewall and all the other yeah. security things going on there. But he can't do that in his own house. I mean, is this a commentary on our education system and how unadvanced <laughs> it is, or maybe I don't know. But then he's like the lone genius in an economics class mind you mm-hmm. and then a the guy so he hacks it and he's talking to his chatting with his friend and he says yeah do you, have you heard of any new games and then she goes oh yeah yeah his I, friend named becca played by jodell yeah jodell Ferdland. actually so, she's one of the shining stars of this movie along yeah. with barry bostwick unfortunately fortunately you know this you get what you get right but mm-hmm. sometimes you gotta take the you know the offer to take the good you take the bad yeah. and- and you wait what? Yeah, I, I don't know. I was about to go into the facts. <laughs> I was of life gonna say wait, wait, facts, facts alive, the facts alive. Anyway, so she's like, yeah, this actually made you made me think of you. Really stressing the point, you know that oh, this is a game that he would make type of thing. So then he loads up the whatever the um, trailer, or whatever demo. Like that's my game, blah blah, and then. Yeah. What happens? Oh, yeah. Then he's trying to convince his dad that this is his game. That is his cor- game was stolen. His and dad then, doesn't believe him, of course. And, and, and his his dad goes on a vacation. Yeah. Or a business trip or something. And leaves his credit card with this fucking kid. Oh, for emergencies. He said yeah. for emergencies. Yeah. Which I'm not sure what you would need. To, what would be an emergency? Yeah. And my thing is, is usually in these movies, like, for example, like in, in a movie that we've covered previously, like, uh, Honey, We Shrunk Ourselves, they left the kids some money. But not a credit card. No, they left them cash. Well, he gave them cash too. And then a credit card. And then a credit card, which I was really surprised about because he just got done saying how much of a disappointment he was to him. Yeah. Then he gives them cash. Of course, fine. He's, you know, I'm good pretty dad. sure if my dad was disappointed in me, he's not going to hand me his credit card. Right. I Which I never know. understood the whole for emergencies. Like, what if you go to the hospital? Of course, but you don't. You're not gonna. You're if you have insurance, you're not gonna need to pay with the credit card to go to the freaking hospital, right? It's gonna no. get billed to you later. So, uh, what kind of emergencies do you really need money for? I mean, I'm guessing maybe if the pipes exploded and he needs to pay for it right away. I, I mean, that's the only thing I could think of. But it's such. But a usually, rare... you can. If, I mean, in a situation like that, you can have money wired. You can do other it's, things. Yeah, it's, it's all just, kinds of stuff. We yeah. live in 2000. Yeah, in this movie's world, 17. Yeah, exactly. You know. <laughs> 
You don't need a your his dad knows enough about business probably to be able to figure this out of how to get money to him in the case of the emergency yeah. without all right without giving him his credit card after telling him how much of a disappointment <laughs> he is. Anyway, so uh, again, the, the continuity of the story is very weird, very contradictory. So, <clears throat> so his son's sad that his dad said he was disappointed in him, and then his big plan is he's gonna he's gonna prove to him that he made the game. So then he calls up his best friend who's doing yoga. I'm assuming she's doing yoga on her own. But no, it's her parents. And her parents, of course, have to be portrayed by the most stereotypical hippies that you would ever find in a movie ever. Like, it's like, you know, we get it, okay? Her parents are hippies. Yeah. Do you, do you really need to drive home the point by them sitting Indian style with a sitar, with sitar music playing from the radio while the dad's holding the sitar? Okay, and then, you know, incense or whatever. And it's like, you know, I, I, I hate it. When well, movies, I was incensed. I was incensed by that scene. <laughs> I hate it when movies, like, almost try to, like, shove the point in your face about oh, yeah. things like that. It's like, okay, like, there's ways of saying that a par- person's parents are hippies without, like, just be like, joke, joke, get it, joke. Like, but we're, again, we're talking about bigger, fatter liars. So, um,. All right, so she tells she tells her parents, and when they're you know listening to their sitar music or whatever, that she wants to go to yoga camp because um, what's his name, Jason? Or sorry, what's um, uh, in this one? He's Kevin. Kevin really <laughs> needs her to be by in this one. In this one, yeah, in this one, <laughs> he really needs her to be by his side to go to San Francisco. And since you know lying to him is second nature, he just assumes that every other person in the world lies to their parents constantly for any reason whatsoever. So oh yeah. Even kids that, you know, respect their parents and want them to, you know, be proud of them and not be disappointed and lying to them. But whatever. And so um, so he's a good moral upstanding so citizen he, here. So he basically yeah, convinces her to lie to her parents uh, that she wants to go to yoga camp. Can we can we just keep pressing the point of how they're hippies? Yoga camp. Ooh. Yep. <sighs> because your parents always just want you to be little you, little thems. Yeah, apparently. So they, they're, like, all, like, happy, like, oh, my God, yeah, she wants to go to yoga camp. Uh. So that's how she gets, you know, to go with him without raising suspicions of being gone for a long period of time. And they go to San Francisco. They find the place. Of course, it's not going to be easy. You know, of course, they go to the – they find it. They go to the, 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 the guard, I guess, or whatever the what, – what do you call him? The guy at the front desk. Secure. He's not really. It's, 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 his character's name is Jimmy. Okay, yeah, that's right. But, Jimmy. Uh, played by uh, Reese Alexander. He's like kind of like the security chief of security or something. I guess. Yeah, he's like, yeah, he's like the big guy, like the one that really takes care of problems. So he he you know who uh, Larry Wolf always refers to as steroids. He does. I see. I didn't. Wow, I didn't notice that. Yeah, wow, several times. That's in the terrible, movie. idiot. Uh, so they ask him politely, "Hey, you know." This guy stole my video game. Can you um, call him and send us send us up? And then the guy does like a whole sarcastic bit about losing his job. Blah blah blah. Kicks him out. So then they um they see all these like delivery food delivery people. Yeah, the, the food delivery people. So then they decide to like sneak in themselves and dress up like a they 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 bribe one of the guys and get his costume for delivering pizza or something. Yeah, yeah. So he, so he's not paying attention. He's like, yeah, sure, go up. And then, but then he's he's he runs into a second boundary. This time, it's the Larry Wolf's personal assistant. Okay, who who did you notice her name? No, I didn't pay attention. What, what was her name? Okay, the name on her desk. Her name is Penny. Oh, Pennywise. Wise. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like the clown. Right. And um, also another interesting thing. I guess there's a painting inside Wolf's office. That is of, um, it's of, uh, I guess it's supposed to be of, um, of, uh, of, uh, oh, what's his face? The guy that played Pennywise in the It movie. Really? There is? Tim, uh, Tim, um, Tim Curry. I, I just blanked on his name for some reason, but it's supposed to be of Tim Curry. And Tim Curry and Barry Bostwick, who plays Larry, were in Rocky Horror Picture Show together. Wow. So it's a weird. <laughs> That's a cool, interesting reference. Yeah, in this great movie. Yeah, this is a great movie. Yeah, what, what a way to waste it. But okay. 
it's like you know putting a cherry on a piece of shit but okay so uh you know they have they have to go through her so then they concoct some plan to they, they have this weird thing where they could forward calls to their phone and they have like a voice thing a changer. voice modulator it was really weird yeah really um, advanced and, phone, and like. they were able to uh she called in and she, uh well uh, um becca in the, it was in the hallway and she was uh doing research on um on Pennywise, yeah, and figured out that uh, Penny had had a date on some kind of like Tinder type app or something the night before, and I don't know what it was. I don't know how she figured that out, but then she just pretended to be this guy Mike, who was her date the day before. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and that gets her to get downstairs because he says that he really likes her or whatever. So then she, you know, traipses downstairs, and then that allows Kevin to confront them. Mr. Wolf doesn't go too well, I don't think. And then he they get kicked out again this time. Hi, folks. This is Michael Lee Cullen II from the podcast that you're listening to right now, along with manager Matthew Haas. You got promoted? Yes. Damn it. Okay, anyways, um, folks, uh, do you like the show Superstore? I don't know. I asked the folks and nobody's answering well, me. Because they're not here. Oh, but we love damn it. it. Yeah, we love it, though. Okay, folks, if you like it as much as we do, you're really going to like the Super Story podcast, which is a podcast where Matthew and I go uh, episode by episode and give our little opinions and thoughts on it. Uh, sometimes we have guests. Sometimes we don't. Um, just depends on how we're feeling. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so if you like this podcast and like our little crazy banter then you should definitely check this out or i might get sad and when i get sad it gets pretty sad yeah, so i can't deal with him when he's sad yeah uh, no one can really so um yeah so, so check out a uh, super story podcast right here where you get this podcast super story podcast Megas Elgar's apprentice, Udo Malaki, comes from a family of dangerous exciting casters hi i'm udo malaki and um I do magic. Even if his ambitions only go as far as staying alive. You know, I was really hoping you were going to say something a bit more positive. Not exactly an ideal magus. Mm. You can hear Udo Malaki and his exciting adventures in the upcoming radio comedy, Magus Elgar. Visit MagusElgar.com to download your copy today. And I'm blanking of what happened next. Uh, okay, next. <laughs> what, okay, what happened next? This I remember this. Okay, basically they... As they were leaving, um, Kevin had tried to steal Larry's phone, okay. but uh, Larry caught him. But then they got outside, and he bumped his phone, which means that you can copy everything from the phone onto your phone. While it was in his pocket, he had bumped it into his phone. It's it's actually a technology. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've, I've at least I've seen it in, like, spy Why the hell do they stuff. have it? That's... <laughs> That's the weird part. Again... He was able to do this onto his phone, but he forgot to save his fucking paper. <laughs> he hand wrote his paper. Yeah. <laughs> well, you have, to you help. have Microsoft Word on a phone now, too. You could have just typed it on your cell phone. You have to have a plot, so... Uh... I get that, but... Why? <laughs> that's the thing that's going to bug me the most about this whole movie is the fact that he hand wrote everything. Right. I don't get this. I don't get it. When I was a kid, I had to hand write things because we didn't have computers. Right. But <laughs> I don't get it. Okay. Anyways. Um. So after that, they they figure out his uh they they, they break into his bank account. And poses his kids and check into the fanciest hotel in the uh, fictional San Francisco of this movie. That's actually Canada. <laughs> Anyways, because um, <laughs> it looks nothing like San Francisco. Um, but <laughs> I've never been to San Francisco, but I've seen pictures. <laughs> and this was Canada. You can throw in as many aerial shots of the Golden Gate Bridge as you want. But you're not in fucking San Francisco. I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyways, um, <laughs> they, uh, they, they, they 
but okay, here's my thing. A. Larry steals a paper that he wants to turn into a video game. B. These kids break into his bank information <laughs> and buy rooms and then they buy clothes and a bunch of fancy food mm-hmm. and all this other shit with his money. <laughs> To the point where they bankrupt him later in the movie. Which is worse? I'm not saying... I mean, maybe stealing this game that's supposedly worth millions of dollars is worse, but... Yeah, let's see. They bought a room. Well, they rented yeah. a room. They they raided the mini bar completely. Yeah. Uh, then there there is a, a point she made about how a cheeseburger costs $50. He's like, oh, that's not enough. We need to go somewhere fancier. Yeah, and so then they, they say, oh, we don't have we don't have good clothes to wear there. So then they go to a, they have a nice little uh, trying on clothes man montage. Oh yeah, thing, of course you know, that have you have that. to have in every teen fucking movie ever. And uh, <laughs> yeah, you know what I love though about this movie that they didn't go for the whole, oh, a boy and girl are best friends. They're eventually going to become a thing. Thing. Yeah, they almost a, they sort of hinted at it, but there not. was a few times where I'm just like, oh, okay. And my my thing is, is like, if there was a sequel to this sequel, oh, then God. maybe they would yeah, get maybe. together. Yeah. But anyway, I because they just hugged. I'm like, okay, good. I don't want to see that stupid. Yeah, I mean, thing go on. they did the same thing in the first one, which was good too. They oh, okay. they remained friends, and it was good. I mean, so you're basically just stealing from the first. Yeah, one. again, but still, it's good to see that they didn't have the, you know. The two of them hook up or anything. Yeah. I mean, who would? Anyways, whatever. He's an idiot. But uh, so um, they uh, yeah, they uh, they steal all of his money. Uh, the the Russian driver figures them out because he used to work in and, um appliances or something like that. Yeah, and he came up with the idea to put a TV in a in a refrigerator. Oh yeah, that was that was his great. <clears throat> that invention. that somehow when uh when Larry Wolf was working in that division, he had taken us his own idea yeah so much like he did this video game you get it so, yeah. yeah so he, he pisses he he betrays everyone to get ahead so um you know he vows revenge or whatever because he's got comrades now to i, I only say conrad not because he's russian but just whatever he's got it's okay he's got a, you know a, a accomplices there we go to help him i don't revenge. think putin's gonna come after us i don't think so, okay no. all right i mean putin's uh, you know a fascist anyway <laughs> That's not, for another time. That doesn't for another podcast. Yeah, right. But uh, yeah, we're gonna do a talk about neo fascism in <laughs> Europe <laughs> and all too real the all too real comrades, comrades. Oh, whatever. I tried it. <laughs> no. anyway. So, uh, uh, of course, you know his his like way of revenge is like the most extreme. Like, let's just kill him. They're like, uh, no, we're not gonna kill him. We're just gonna do. We're just gonna do what we did in the first movie, where we're gonna. Uh, put something in his shampoo to make his face look all fucked up. Well, what they did is they put some kind of bleach in his in his uh, to, something to bleach his skin in like his skin lotion. Okay, I think it was, and then something to dye his hair red or orange or whatever the fuck it yeah, was. Yeah, that's in right. The, in in his in his shampoo. Yeah, that and was weird. instead of like in the first movie where they turned him blue and then dyed his hair orange. Yeah, it was weird. Yeah, and that whole scene too where he's. He gets home and he's like doing his exercise routine or whatever. Why the fuck would he put all that food into a fucking smoothie? Like, I mean, I get that some people like to drink to drink their eat for some reason. Yeah, I don't understand it. But um, I accidentally kicked our remote in there in our studio oh, okay. and turned our TV on. Sorry, folks, <laughs> we got distracted there. Okay, um, anyways. <laughs> Yeah, I know some people people like to eat their drink or sorry, drink their eat, but you know, he he had all, all the stuff ready to begin with. He had eggs, it's like and stuff and it's like, okay, well, I can understand like you know, you not having time to eat or whatever, but you already had the stuff prepared already. You could just eat it. Like there's no reason why you have to put it in the blender for like 15 minutes or whatever. And then, I guess there's some kind of like health reasons that if you drink stuff, it's better for you or something. Well, I've heard that. It makes I've heard it the worse. opposite. I've, yeah, the, the, but I mean, whatever. some people. It just. I guess it just depends on who you listen yeah. to. I mean, of course I mean, he, one one day red M and M's are cancerous, and the next day they're great. Oh, really? Yeah, I never. I don't heard know. Of I'm just joking. Oh. I don't know. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, I love M and M's. Me too. If they would like if to you... sponsor our show, you can contact me at mike at cullenpark dot com. Thank you. Okay. Anyways. Yeah. Uh... 
<laughs> so they they have, they have to go through a stupid exercise routine to show how much of a douchebag he is, and then then he goes and drinks his shit smoothie, and then he's like, "Ooh, it tastes pretty good," blah, 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 or whatever type of thing. But they put like a bunch of pills. Yeah, I think they were sleeping pills. Oh, a, sleeping pills. Yeah, okay. here's another thing. So they drugged him. They okay. drugged him. <laughs> so, and they could have killed him by putting all. They could pills have killed him. Right. They stole all of his money. <laughs> and then they broke into his house. This dude just him. this dude just took this kid's paper. It wasn't like they killed his family. Right. And the thing is too, it was just the paper. He didn't actually make the game. No, they 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 still had to he he basically the thing is that there were still these glitches in the game. Right. That that Kevin had to fix later on. I'll get into that later. Let's, tell let, me, let's put a pin in that okay. right now, but But also don't don't tell me that like a three page paper is enough code to make an entire game like that. It's not. Even an Atari game would have more code, you know, than that. Like, whatever. But then again, I don't know what the fuck that game was. It was There's no some, reasoning there was to no it. There plot. It was just, yeah, we'll get to that later, <laughs> yeah. too. But yeah, the game itself makes no sense. It just makes sense that a person like Kevin would make it because mm. it literally has no theme, no plot. It's just some kid... Doing something. Don't know even I, what I, he's yeah, doing. I don't get it. Just walking around. I don't even know what he does. Whatever. So he, uh, after drugging him and potentially killing him, uh, he wakes up and then finds out that his face is like silver or whatever. Or and white. Was it white? Okay. Yeah, to it's me, it's like silver. I don't know. Because they basically made him look like a mime. Okay. And he's got some big, important meeting that. Which is the worst thing in the world. But we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Yes. We do we do have a special guest coming in later. I'll yeah. let you know about that soon. Yeah. It's going to be a good one. Yeah. So his face is all white and stuff, and he's got, like, a big important meeting to, to talk about the, the game that he is designing. And, of course, he looks like shit because his hair is all, like, red and orange, and, like, it looks like they shaved part of his head, too. Yeah, they, like, shaved the top of his head and gave him kind of, like, a fryer tuck sort of. So, like, yeah. he just looks terrible, and... He insists on doing the the interview anyway, and just shows up looking. No, not interview. Sorry, the meeting. And um, because he goes to a meeting later on, still looking like that. Yeah, and he has to go to a goes to a meeting, uh, but but it actually he ends up at a at a biker bar. Oh yeah. And they throw him out of there for some odd reason because they're offended by mimes. They hate mimes, which again, something that they didn't explain. No. At all. Why? Like what? Why does anybody hate mimes? I. I mean, I understand there's, like, a universal hatred for them, which makes no sense to me. Well, I get that, but, like, but, why would it be so visceral at a bar where people would actually just, like, stop everything they're doing? Of course, turn off the jukebox. Got to have that stupid trope. Oh, yeah. And, um... Which just, I don't understand because you can't really turn off... Anyways. I know. Unless, it, it, unless you want... Yeah. And then he goes into the stupid speech that's supposed to be inspiring, I guess. I don't know. And... About like accepting people for who they are and what they look like, and then they and don't not buy what they it. Look like, yeah, and they don't buy it, and they kick them out of the bar. And they throw them into some trash out front. Yeah, like on a fishing net or something. So that's supposed to make you feel like sympathetic for him, I guess. I don't know. I don't and then know. whatever, it's stupid. And then, uh, so then he does something. Who knows? And then he, uh, uh, <laughs> he at one point ends up on a TV show. That's right, interview. Yeah, for a TV interview, he he. They they put a bunch of makeup on him. There's a really a line that I shouldn't have laughed at, but um, <laughs> they're putting the makeup on him, and then something like uh, some the the person putting the makeup on says something like, "Oh, you who does your makeup or something like who you know like you look ugly or something who does your makeup?" And then he's or he says to somebody else like, "Who does yours?" Oh yeah, it's just like yeah uh, stupid it's an asshole. Yeah, yeah, it was an asshole move. So. What happened? Oh yeah, what happens there is that they they spiked his no they 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 made a, a smoothie for him and then said that it was from the show itself or whatever. Yeah, and it was and they put uh, ghost peppers. Oh, that's in right. It. Yeah, they put a bunch of like. So, so again, they're poisoning the dude. Again, so and he's like, "Oh, I didn't ask for this," but then the the woman walks away because he he asks some woman who works in the show to give it to him personally, yeah. so that he wouldn't be he wouldn't suspicious. be yelled at. Yeah, so then he, he, he takes a sip of the – well, at first, got to keep playing it up, too, because every time he's about to take a sip, the interviewer asks him a and question. He, and he and he's got makeup on covering up the uh, oh, yeah. the, the face that he has. And it just looks so, terrible. So uh, 
So yeah, he, he starts sweating profusely after drinking the ghost pepper smoothie. And uh And he starts eating everything inside, drinking everything inside, and they film yeah. the whole thing, of course, for some reason. Yeah, they, because cameras always do that. They don't cut or at all. They're no. like, Oh, we'll just let him have this moment of just panicking and We'll put this on TV. And, yeah. Okay. Now he's on this interview, by the way, advertising this game that still has a glitch in it. Yeah. I've never worked for a uh, a phone game app com- company or Nintendo or Sega or any of these type of companies, you know, or PlayStation or whoever. But I'm pretty sure you don't start advertising something that drastically that still has glitches in it. The game. I mean, sometimes you'll 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 do a teaser on something, but they had like a deadline for when it came out. I mean, I've I know I know I've I'm like made movies and stuff, and we've had deadlines, and we do advertise coming up to it. But it's usually like teaser trailers. But if we had some kind of major setback in the movie, I don't. I think we would stop advertising it. I don't know. It just seems really messed up to me. I mean, my head hurts, Matt. Yeah, you're you okay. I'll be okay. It's just this movie hurt my head. I a mean, lot. the game barely started before it started glitching. It yeah. was like as soon as it started. It yeah, it's like you turn it on and it glitches. So let's 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 like advertise a release date from that. Yeah, you can't even play the game at all for not even a I second. Don't get it. So stupid. And so again, the game makes no sense. Too. Again, so, it hurts my head. So after this whole meltdown where they apparently just decided to film the whole thing, he's really like losing his shit at this point, and then. He finally, I guess, admits defeat or something like that and promises to tell the kid's dad. Again, that's all he wants. This kid doesn't want rights to the game. He doesn't want royalties for the game being sold. He just wants his dad to know that he didn't lie. Yeah, that's what all he fuck? wants. What the fuck? Why wouldn't you want royalties, you stupid piece of shit? Like, is your dad that rich that you're like, no thanks, you know? Well, it's kind of the same thing that the kid won in the first movie, too. I'll so just let just, my dad pay for everything, even though I, I'll be perfectly able to pay for myself. Nah, who cares? I'll just use his emergency credit card for emergencies. Yeah. Because flying to San Francisco is an emergency. Also paying for my friend's airfare as well, so it's two plane tickets to and from. Mm-hmm. Emergency. And the emergency is my dad needs to know I didn't make make it up about this game. That's yep. the emergency. Yep, 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 yep. You know, not getting royalties. Well, I will give him credit. He did try calling before he went out there. Oh, that's right. He did try to tell them. He tried calling them, and they kept hanging up on him. Because, of course, they wouldn't hang up on someone just claiming that the guy stole their game. I mean, he's the only one that would ever do that, right? Oh, no, nobody ever does that. No one ever would no. call and say, hey, I thought of that game first. No. Companies like that don't have lawyers on retainer no. just for this purpose Why? or anything. No. But oh, in this movie, of course they don't because <laughs> you got you got further along the plot. So um, what happens next, Mike? I don't even remember now. Um, um, okay, we had the – okay, they they do pranks on them. More pranks, right? Oh, but actually, you know, we get to the point eventually where they need um, the first. Oh, they did the pranks originally, and then they have a, a situation where um, Kevin does help him fix the game. Oh, he yeah. convinces him because you know, like he said, he wants him to call his dad, and then of course he fixes the game and double crosses him. <laughs> of course, you know, Larry. Larry double crosses Kevin and uh, has the. Has the kids taken away? And Okay, here's my question. I have several of these questions throughout the movie, you know. This is a video game company. There's glitches in this game. We see at least a dozen people working on this game. You mean to tell me not one of those guys could figure out how to fix this fucking game? No. The glitch was so bad. And supposedly, this is like a really popular, you know, this, this, like, I mean, this would probably be like the equivalent of working at, you know, at like EB Games or something. You know what I mean? It's not like it's, you know, mom and pop basement video games or something. It's <laughs> That's like, a great name for it. Yeah. A mom and pop basement video games. Yeah. It's just, I don't know. I, it, it just doesn't make sense to me. Like, that, nothing does. That, that they need this Kevin kid to fix this fucking game. He's like the missing key, you know. He he's yeah. got a he, no. One, he's so he's such a genius. 
He's such a genius. I mean, he's just, that's why he lies. He everything he does is okay because he's Kevin and he's a genius. And you know, his teachers can go fuck themselves because you know the rules don't apply to Kevin. But he can't type his fucking no, paper. No, he can't. He's got to write it down by hand. <laughs> or have turned the paper in, in the, uh, you know, on time in the first place. Because usually when you're smart, you can actually just, you know, shit that shit out. No. And um, <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe it's because I struggled a lot in high school and stuff and had to, you know, find ways to get things done and study hard. I, assholes like this piss me off when they don't do the right thing. Right. So, okay. I hate this kid. You can calm down. So, um. So Kevin McCall. My head hurts, Matt. So Kevin McCallister part two. Um, when, he, <laughs> when he's home alone, so I thought I, I like. I thought that was good. yes, it was. Uh, he, uh, you know, just instead of you know messing with the wet bandits, he's you know he's basically ruining this guy's life, who stole you know his idea or whatever. And um, yeah, he fixes it, and then everything's great. And At then, least in Home Alone, it was the parents' fault. They left him home. Alone. They left him home. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't. <laughs> and, this, and this time, he just des- decides to go on a freaking journey to San Francisco with his dad's emergency money. And then, uh, but, hey, you know, dad must make a lot of money. So again, typical rich kid. You know, oh well, my dad. You know, he works hard. I'll just, you know, I'll have an easy life. Fuck you. Anyway, so. Uh, what happens next? He fixes the game, and then... Then they throw him out, and then um, they're just getting kicked out of the uh, hotel. Pennywise comes and saves the day, because she's pissed off at Fuckface Wolf. Oh, because he fired her, right? No. No? She she just is just sick of the way that he was treating the kids. Oh, okay. Just like in the first movie, where the assistant in that movie... Did That's the right. Same he thing. did, yeah, the same thing. I didn't see that coming at all, Matt. And then... Did you? No, I did not. And then what happens? They um, they set up a whole thing to get him caught, like they did in the first. Okay, movie. where he admitted to it, right, or something. Yeah, like. they they they, the limo driver comes and picks him up, and it's the, uh, it's the Russian limo driver. Oh yeah, just like in the first movie, it was Donald Faison's oh, character. God. Um, <laughs> and they basically pretend to drive him through all of these like hazardous. Yeah, places and it or... turns out the whole time. They, they, they get him to admit it on video that he did this shit. He's inside, uh, he's inside the, uh, somehow inside, like, a studio of some sort. Yeah, how did, how did he not notice that? I, I don't know, and they have, like, they have, uh, flat screen monitors around each of the windows. So when he looked outside, he thought he was in the middle of the desert. Or something. No, or, a train. Or train. No, a train oh, was oh yeah, no, he thought a train was coming. It was a desert in the first place. But how did he not know yeah. that they even got into the place to begin with? Was the whole thing? Well, the windows were tinted, and he didn't see out. Oh, okay. I don't know. But he could see out all of a sudden? They, that seems know. weird. They rolled down the window, I think. Oh, okay. I, I, I don't know. Whatever. It was stupid. And then... But but anyways, Barry Boswick's character, Larry Wolf, admits to the thing on the video. They have a chase scene... They end up on the stage. They're showing videos of him doing stupid stuff like exercising and shit. Oh, yeah. Which, why was that funny? I Watching like, a man exercise. Like, how is that humorous? I don't understand. <sighs> what's wrong with exercising? Or what's funny about it? Matt, my head hurts. <laughs> I don't get it. Like, I, don't, I can understand, like, a guy dancing in his underwear or something. He's just on his exercise bike. He how, was in underwear. Was, okay, in the but, one. But, but how is that funny? Him on an exercise bike? Like how? How is? I don't know. Maybe, it maybe, maybe it's 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 funny. I don't get it. Chubby old dude exercising. I don't know. I don't what. get it. It's I stupid. don't either. It makes no sense. Like, if anything, they should be applauding him. Oh, there's an older gentleman who still cares about his body, and he's drinking this terrible tasting smoothie with eggs and broccoli and other kinds of weird shit, and he's, you know, he's got like dumbbells that he's lift in and he's got his own private gym and his own house yeah it seems like a nice thing that you would be applauding someone for but, but, you, but know, you know he doesn't have kids he has no kids so that's funny i guess too how's that funny? i don't know whatever i had my head hurts now too my god damn it yeah and then so so basically <laughs> what happens is they have this big conference where they're de- debuting the game it's all fixed he admitted to you know, on video. This time, Kevin backed up and emailed the fucking thing to himself. Oh, well, that's good. The video. He finally figured out to save his work. 
idiot. Again, why didn't he type his paper, Matt? I don't know. He ra- It had to look cool. It had to look like he's a, an artist, you know? Because they even had, like, candles, I think, at one point, or, like, to make it really cool. Like, oh, man, he's really, he's really getting into this project, you know, type of thing. I don't get it. And I still don't think he'd be able to do that all in one night. I'm going to cry, Matt. I know. Anyways, so then... <laughs> So then he they bowed or they he bows and they all pl- applaud him because they and know everybody it. in the everybody the, in the audience of the thing looks like you know Steve Jobs just rose from the grave right, and right. appeared on from stage the stupid Kevin McAllister piece of shit yeah and then hey folks this is uh Michael E Cullen the second um, from the podcast that you're listening to right now along with Matthew Haas. we just wanted to tell you about our great great podcast super. called Super it's called all too real. And on that show, what what do we do, Matt? We we watch biopics and then we talk about whether or not the movie matched up with the real story or not. So we it's a lot we, more exciting than that though. Yeah, right? so, so 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 we we analyze the real story and the real story. Get it? Get it? Real. You know? Yeah, they're spelled differently, yeah. folks. You can guess which one I said which way. Uh-huh. Anyways, um, so uh, sometimes we have a guest, sometimes we don't. Um, but we uh, talk about great, sh- great, uh, great movies like uh, Shattered Glass yes. and The Social Network and uh, A Futile and Stupid Gesture, among others. Um, those are some of the ones that we've covered so far, and uh. We're going to cover a lot more, so uh, please uh, subscribe on Stitcher, um, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you uh, find your great, fun podcasts, and be sure to share it with your friends. Do it. Do it. Do it. And make sure you're not afraid to get all too real. Bye-bye. And then um, and then we, we go to the – back to the home afterwards. Uh, the dad came up. The dad appeared, too. I forgot about that. Yeah. Somehow he appeared there. Oh, that's right. Someone called him. Yeah. Who was it? Was it? Um, I don't know. Was it Pennywise or Becca? Someone called somebody. Him. Somebody called him, and and his dad just left his business conference to fly to San Francisco. Who I know. knows? He may have been even further out to San Francisco than he was originally. Like, what if they live in Chicago and his maybe, business maybe trip his, was... Maybe his business trip was in San Francisco. Who knows? Then why would he go... To... I don't then know! he's going to get caught by his own dad. What a fucking <laughs> idiot. So, I don't know. anyway, so he... Uh, this is ridiculous. But this but then they, is... they get back home and, and Kevin's dad is like, you know, says, oh, we're going to talk mm-hmm. about you using my credit card, blah, 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 right. or something. And then he, he says, here, just take it out of this. And he gives him a check and it's for like... Uh, like three hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah, it was over. It was in the multiple hundreds of thousands. Yeah, and that was one. And, that, and he goes, "Oh, th- this was um, my first royalty check." Yeah, his first. It's like great. So now Kevin, he's a compulsive liar. And again, what does this video game do? The video game makes. I mean, if, it's like a, it's like a phone app thing. And I mean, I know we've had stupid things like Candy Crush and Flappy but Bird. But those make and, sense uh, though. Yeah, there's but, at least a, 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 a concept. I didn't know what the fuck this thing was doing. It was like some kind of weird little. I don't know, Kirby wannabe thing walking around uh, doing something, and I don't know what the fuck. We can going look at. it up. I don't even remember anything at all happening. In and the they game. were throwing things at things and stuff, and I, that's all I saw. And I don't know what the hell it had to do with being a liar. And why was it called Bigger Fatter Liar? What? But they kept referring to it as Big Fat Liar in the movie. Oh, they did. Yeah, it oh, would wow. say Bigger Fatter Liar on the screen, but then they'd refer to it as Big Fat Liar. So they're like trying to like piggyback on the first movie by like Either that or they, subliminally. Did, they, they probably thought they were going to call it big fat liar too but then somebody thought it'd be clever to call it bigger fatter liar okay but okay in post that's, i mean you know that's that's wonderful i guess but i don't know matt can we take a break for I a minute this is, one the worst, this is one of the worst ones we watched I think. yeah i want to take a break yeah, I, I gotta go uh, get our guest he's gonna come in here we've got an, an expert um one I'm, I just want to make up one one more thing that happened in the movie. Oh yeah, Larry Wolf ends up getting fired, obviously, and then he becomes a street mime, a terrible street, mime. really bad one. But uh, we'll be right back in a second here, folks, with a, with a special guest. Stay tuned. Okay, we're back. Um, we just had um, our very special guest uh, step in here, to, uh, and I'm at. He's sitting at microphone three right now. Um, his name is Mark Marceau. You may have heard of Marcel Marceau, the famous mime. 
Uh, this is uh, Marc Marceau, his uh, third cousin twice removed, who is um, a very famous American mime. And we're about to ask him some questions about Barry Bostwick, uh, Larry Wolf's portrayal of a mime at the end of the movie. Um, okay, Mark. Um, what did you think of Barry Bostwick's portrayal of being a street mime in this movie? Was it accurate? All right, he's trapped in a box. I guess you can't talk inside this box. I don't know. Mark's just sitting here trapped in a box. How, how do we get him out? I don't know if we have to break the glass or what we do. He's trapped in a glass box. He, so I guess he can't. It's on the other side can of the microphone. Can you get out of the box? Can you, can you mime yourself out? Mark, are you okay? Now he looks like he's he can't breathe inside uh, this box. God, so he's going to die? God inside a... Do you have like a hammer or something? We How can do break I get the... you out? Tell me or show me. You, you've, you've got to talk to us here, Mark. Something. All right, now he looks angry. I'm angry. I right am too. What? Dude, Matt, Matt, I, I went, went, when you when you got this guest for us. Oh, it's my fault. Okay. Yeah, I know. I mean, when when. I mean, I, I don't want to place the blame on you. I mean, even though I made you do all the work to get the guest, but um, did you have him vetted? You know, by like three or four other mimes. No. Did you try talking to them? No, I didn't. I didn't find three or four other mimes. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. There's not. I really just found either. him at a Burger King. I'm not even sure if he's a mime or not. I just he wasn't talking. He was. Very he was silent. just wearing the white makeup. He was just very on. quiet, so I just assumed he was a mime. And he had white makeup on. Yeah. Okay. Now he's pretending to 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 pull a rope. Like, by the way, Burger King, if you'd like to. Yeah, Burger Burger King, if you would like to sponsor us. Even if you have mimes in your uh, lobby, we're fine with that. You can contact me at Mike at CullenPark.com. Anyways, um, the, uh, okay, so now he's, he's pulling a rope. Okay. All right. Can you, can you, the game wants you to pull the other end, man. Can I help you? Okay. Yeah, all I right. think he wants Let's, you to, okay. All right, there we go. Okay. I'm pulling. I'm pulling. All right, now he fell on his ass. God damn it. What the? <laughs> Fucking Mark. K- K- Mark, you look really mad. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to yell at you. All right, now I don't know you, how to help you. I don't know what not, I'm not, to do. All right, now he's now he's storming off. All right, maybe we shouldn't have him talk. Maybe he just yeah, maybe we should just cut this segment. Sorry, dude. Um, uh, okay. I'll see you later. At all right, the all right. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll okay. Give me a double cheeseburger. I'll meet you in a half hour. Yeah, okay. Here, here's some money. Here's some money, Mark. Thanks for coming in. All right, yeah, okay. All right, see ya. Yeah, some 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 chicken nuggets. Okay, yeah, like a shake maybe. No, no fries. Okay, bye, Mark. All right. Okay, that was fun. That was our first, our first, first, guest. first very special guest. I mean, sorry, folks. Didn't say anything. Yeah, that was kind of rude. Anyways, um, we gotta talk to him about this later. I don't even think he saw the movie. I don't think so either. I, mean, I, didn't, I, I think didn't he just him. wanted to be on, well, our, be on our podcast. I didn't ask him if he saw the movie. Well, that was your... <laughs> I just said if you want to come on a podcast and talk. <laughs> I was trying to find out the you know oh, how, well. how, well of a, how well of a street mind Barry Bostwick was. I mean, by the way, Barry Bostwick is a nice guy. Yes. I just want to tell you that. I met him once. I'm actually in a movie with Barry Bostwick called uh, yeah. Home Run Showdown. Yep. I'm, I'm an extra in that movie. In a scene that features Barry Bostwick. So I'm actually in on the screen at the same time as him. Mm-hmm. You can see me very clearly in that movie that also stars Matthew Lillard and um, Dean Cain. <sighs> it's a good time. Sitting next to my dad yeah. in a baseball stadium. Mud hens. Yep. And, uh, <laughs> and Barry Bostwick is also in a movie called uh, Three Days in August, I think it is. Um, with uh, the wonderful... <sighs> Colton Tapp, who is in Pi Day, Die Day. Great movie. Yes, it is. Good, good, good stuff. Anyways, so, Matt, would you recommend this movie to anybody? No. Why or why not? I, I just say watch the first one if you want to watch it. It's better. It's 
got better actors for the most part. You know, Sans, um, Barry Bostwick. Boy, I mean, I um, think the kids are good. Well, too. Becca was good. Yeah. I heard the actress played Becca was good. Yeah. Um, the girl that played Pennywise was good too. Yeah, I mean, it was yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. whatever. I mean, you 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 got to you got to work with what you're given. I guess. Oh yeah. Your lines and everything and how the director wants you to act. I guess. Yeah. By the way, this was, in case you're wondering, directed by. Ron Oliver, not John Oliver, but Ron, Ron. Oliver, who uh, is an Emmy-nominated director and writer-producer. Um, he uh, has also been an actor and things, too, but he's directed uh, episodes of... Uh, hmm. Of... Uh, back in the day, like it looks like uh, some episodes of Degrassi, The Next Generation. Oh, wow. Um, trying to see other things that pop out at me. He's directed a lot of stuff, actually. Some episodes of the TV show Goosebumps. Hmm. Um, the live action Police Academy, the series. Okay. The new Adams Family series. Are you afraid of the dark? He's directed seventeen episodes. Oh, yeah, seventeen episodes of Are You Afraid of the Dark? So yeah, he. I mean, he's got a decent. He's got you know, a nice. I mean, I guess I changed my mind. It's it's fine. <laughs> if you want to watch it. I mean, with a friend. Or I mean, something. if you liked the first you know, one, or if you know you're you're just going through Netflix and you want to find something stupid to watch. That, yeah, that's not to, scary. to entertain your kids. It's, yeah, or something. Yeah, it's it's worth watching, it's, but it has a lot of flaws. It man. really, uh, yeah, it's, it did hurt my head. I got a headache right now. Yeah, for, do you have a headache? Yeah, I do. So we both have headaches. And um, I mean, okay. And like I said, why the fuck didn't he type the paper out? We wouldn't have had a movie if it wasn't for that. Yeah, that's what it was. That's probably why. And I mean, I, I found a website that I really am starting to enjoy called uh, it's it's the Awful Movies uh, Wiki. And uh, if you want to check them out, they list 19 reasons why this movie sucks. <laughs> so um, I'm not going to name all of them, but I'll go through a couple of them here. Yeah, um, one of the things is Sean Levy, the director of the original film, didn't even plan on making a sequel, and neither did Dan Schneider, the writer of the first film. Neither one of them have any involvement in this movie. Dan Schneider, for other reasons, because he's kind of uh, been blacklisted right now out of Hollywood, for good reason, because he supposedly, uh, allegedly, I'm just going to make sure I'm pointing this out, allegedly, <laughs> um, sexually harassed and possibly raped a bunch of underage girls in Nickelodeon. Including Amanda Bynes. Okay, mm. so um, <laughs> but he, you know, he's known for uh, a lot of uh, things. Like he, he wrote the movie Good Burger. He, uh, he, he was one of the writers on all that. He created Keenan and Kel. He created Drake and Josh. He created the Amanda Show. He, you know, and and probably almost all the live action shows that uh, Nickelodeon's had in the last like you know twenty or so years were all him. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> And he was also an actor back in the day. He played Dennis Blunden on Head of the Class with, uh, yeah, he was the fat kid on that show. That was a great show, though. I loved that show. I used to watch it all the time. Hey. Head of the Class, oh, it was with, had, uh, um... with um, Howard Hessman from uh, WKRP yeah, yeah. as the teacher who taught the, like, gifted kids. He was, like, the, the like... The cool rebel, teacher, the rebel teacher, the, like shows former up, hippie teacher. Who, he shows yeah. up late, you know that kind of thing. He just wakes up, gets out of bed, and then he was in the show until he decided to quit, and then they replaced him with Billy Connolly as the new teacher, who then got a spinoff of that show. But anyways, wow. I digress. So, but anyways, uh, we're gonna go off and um, comb the world for maybe another great uh, direct video sequel or something else wonderful to talk about next episode. But be sure to tune into the next one. Um, we're not sure. My head hurts. Me, mine too. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to All Too Real 2 Podcast, a Cullen Park production. Produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen II. Music by Matthew Hawes. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at cullenpark.com.